We need a culture of commitment, not complacency. Again, we're talking about how we move from just being present to actually being an active part of the body, right? Functioning in our role. But we have to move from just mere complacency to commitment. We need a culture of commitment. Look at what he says as we finish this chapter, verse 27. He says, now you are the body of Christ. That's important. He doesn't say, now you are the body of the local church. No, he says, you are the body of Christ, meaning this local church assembly is a picture of Christ's body here in South Tampa. Each one of you is part of it. And God has placed in the church, he's going to give some roles now, some different offices. First, apostles, prophets, second, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing and of helping and of guidance and of different tongues. And he says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? The, the, the assumption he's trying to get there is, no, all do not. He says, well, then now eagerly then desire the greater gifts. And what's interesting is he's actually going to go on and describe what the greatest gift we can all have is, which is none of those things he just mentioned. It's love. Now, again, we could spend a whole sermon talking about each, every single one of these individual gifts and things. But the point that I'm trying to make here is this. We are members of Christ's body. Therefore, the only way we can operate truly as a member of Christ's body is if we are committed to being members of Christ's body not just complacent about that reality that we've been saved into. Indifferent about it, if you will. Think about it like this. Christ gave his body for us on the cross so we could be members of his body here on earth. So why do we take the body of Christ so casually? Why do we take our role as part of his body? Because listen to this. We are his A-team. We're the varsity Meaning if God wants his hand to be felt in this world, he's going to use his hands to reach this world. If God wants his feet to be felt in this world, he's going to use his feet in this world. But we will never actually be able to live into our God-given calling and our God-given purpose if we are complacent about that role to begin with. What is complacency? Complacency is when you quit but you don't leave. Some of you, maybe you grew up and you had parents who were complacent. They were there, they were present, they were in the home, but they quit emotionally, spiritually, relationally. I think we could probably even argue when it comes from a relational standpoint, complacency in a relationship is more difficult than loss in a relationship. Because if you leave, at least I know what you're doing because your feet are following what your mouth is saying. The flip of that is, though, think about it in here. Could it be that it's actually more unhelpful and more unhealthy for us to continue to be a church that grows and that people are present in, but if we remain complacent, that is to say, we've given up on the mission of God. I don't mind if anybody comes in here on a Sunday and gives their life to Jesus. It doesn't affect me one bit. Oh, we had a baptism this week? Oh, it was really sweet. We were able to do that. We shift that mindset to a mindset that says, every time I'm here, I'm a part of this church, I'm anticipating God's going to move. I'm anticipating something's going to happen in worship, and it's going to stir, and it's going to transform people. I'm anticipating when the gospel is preached from stage, people are going to respond. I'm anticipating that in my own life, I'm so committed to the mission of God that I'm going to be an individual who is going after my neighbors, going after my coworkers, because I am not complacent. I am committed to this. We need a culture of commitment, not just complacency.